Right, I think we are live. Um, if we are, the people that are in the in the show and the live stream, can you just put something in the chat to say you can hear me, see me, and everything like that, please? Um, yes. So let good. you into a secret conversation in the green room. <laughs> um, we were talking about who's got the best tan, so feel free to put that in the conversation yeah. underneath. Yeah, obviously Richard has uh, been spending a bit of time uh, out there in the sun. Um, but thank you for everyone who's tuned in live. And if anyone's watching on a on a replay, thank you again for registering. Um, I've been quite overwhelmed, to be honest, by the response and getting people involved. Um, but thank you so much to you know the Lonely Marketers WhatsApp group um, who's involved in that. That was the reason why it's kicked off. Um, but also. You know, for everyone who's just given encouragement. Um, housekeeping first. Those of you who have found the chat, keep chatting away. Ask questions in there if you want. If you want to put a question specifically to me, the host, um, there's an ask question thing down there, which can be upvoted and things like that. Um, there's a poll there as well. Just me being cheeky, asking asking a question about how consult how consultants are involved in your campaigns, if they are at all. Um, but other than that, get involved, ask questions. We'll try and pick it up. We, Me and Richard have got um, a loose schedule um, and agenda, uh, and we'll work through that. But if you've got any questions, just um, attack me with us. But first and foremost, thank you, Richard, for being the first guest on these midday musings. If you want to give a little introduction to, to who you are, what you do, and things like that, that'd be great. Amazing. Um, thanks for having me as the guinea pig on this <laughs> event series. I'm not going to go into too much detail about myself because we all know that's boring. No one's here to listen to that. You can go on my LinkedIn profile if you want to. Really, really plotted history. Trained as a journalist, failed in radio journalism, set up a record label, failed at the record label, fell into marketing and PR, <laughs> built up a B2B marketing agency of a few others, and then eight or so years ago, stumbled into the world of recruitment as we all do and absolutely loved it since worked for a few different agencies and also worked in rec tech as well so again if you want to find out about any of those agencies go onto my linkedin because that's not what you're here to hear me talk about today no and what we are here to talk about is is getting consultants involved in in campaigns in your marketing in general now just looking quickly at the poll there the, the most popular answer is some of the time is the how often do you feel consultants are brought into your marketing activity, which I can imagine is pretty accurate from, from my experience when I've worked in-house. Um, but what we want to do in today's session is to is to not moan about recruitment consultants. The, enough of that goes on, um, but to give you some steps out to, you know, how to engage with them potentially a little bit better and how to make success out of it. Now, the reason I asked Richard um, to join this session is that I've seen campaigns that he's done at previous companies um, and at the company's uh, handle where he's working now, where it's obvious that consultants are getting involved. And um, some of you may have watched his episode where he was with Darren from Pager, um, where he spoke about it as well. But um, what it is, it is a two-way street, isn't it, Richard, with consultants? It's it's all well and good us kind of saying, oh, you know, they never get involved, they don't listen to me type thing, but it is a two-way street. So what should we be doing as as marketers to, you know, make sure, I think I'll put it in the, the notes, that, that consultants, you know, have more than one date with us, if you like? <laughs> it's a great analogy to use. Um, the biggest thing you can do is work out how to remove the us and them culture. Mm -hmm. There is always going to be that culture there. The big reality is a salesperson's job and a marketer's job are very, very different. We have different objectives, we have different pressures, and we have just different day-to-day -day ways of going about what we do. But what we have to do is to try to break that down and then just look at what those shared goals are. When you've got the shared goals, it makes it a lot easier to talk about what you're doing why you're doing it and how you can actually help someone. Mm -hmm. So the really, really simple, the most obvious thing you can do is to understand what people are struggling with. Yeah. And if you can talk about their problems and then you can work up a solution together, what you should have at the end of it is a campaign or a project or a goal that you've achieved together. Yeah. And you have to do that together. 
And on top of that, I guess just being likable whilst you're having those conversations. We can't teach proof, you how but... to be likable, guys. If you're a very <laughs> unlikable person and you're watching, mm, yeah. <laughs> <Not like laughs> Everyone here, do. we're all likable, we're all fine. Yeah. If you're not likable, go and find a company where they like you. Yeah. There will be an environment where you can be likable. That's very true. And, that is very true. And again, I'm not saying that you should go down the pub every night with them. Sometimes that does work for certain audiences, but it's not about that. It's just about being approachable. And for people to think they can come to you, share ideas, and you're not going to make them feel stupid. You're not going to just say, that's, um, that's something we're not going to do, just to work with them. And even if there is no solution at the end, for them just to feel like they've confided in you and you've listened to them and taken them seriously, rather than just throw in ideas at consultants and expecting them to actually get involved. Yeah, and as Billy says, there Haribo and pastries in meetings do help. Um, you know, <laughs> get get that low hanging low hanging fruit for, for sure. You mentioned there about kind of shared goals and objectives, and I think potentially that's where that's where the split happens a lot of the time, because let's be honest on the on the majority of side, the consultant's goal is to make a deal and to add a few zeros to a commission check at the end of the month. A Martin's goal will be quite separate from that so what could be an example of of a shared of a shared goal in that sense um, a really obvious example is about building somebody's community so strategically um, how I look at it is a recruitment consultant is under a lot of pressure to hit their targets hit their placements and to hit their sales targets at the end of the month and quarter so most consultants will be thinking about the next 30 days the next 90 days we like to strategize for the full year, what we're yeah. going to be for the year. And then we will feed those goals into the business and it doesn't align with what has to be a lot of the time quite short termism mm -hmm. from the consultants because they want to get to that next commission check and they want to keep their role. They mm -hmm. have a lot more pressure around those targets. So the obvious goal is who is in their network, who's in their community and how can we actually work together to get it to a manageable size that they're happy with, that they can then use to achieve their goals. One, when I get into this and I'm going to get really, really boring, but yep. this is obviously how I do that with them. It's just looking at the contacts that they've got on the CRM, looking at how they've coded them and then understanding whether that is a manageable network for them to be engaging with on a daily, weekly basis, whatever that frequency is. And then as a marketer to take the, um, cohort out of it that they don't have time to engage with but could be really important for those longer term strategies yeah and then that suddenly becomes the goal so a really easy goal is are you keeping in touch with your network is your network a big enough size and they're working together to actually understand how we can create the perfect network and then create the perfect contact strategy for them as well yeah and i'm we'll i'll talk in depth about this on a on a future episode i think it's with um sarah about managing upwards but it's important that whatever marketing ideas that that you have or and things have to be brought in from above as well so it filters down into the wider business objectives for the year isn't it so you can still have then those those more agile you know monthly sprints but it is still feeding into a kind of a, a wider business objective as well which your ceo or your boss can say push down onto consultants and say look this is what we're doing. You need to you need to listen to Richard or whoever. Um, absolutely. Every marketing um, goal, and this is teach all to suck eggs, has to be directly aligned with either the commercial goals, the business objectives, or it has to be in line with your culture and values as well. If you're not marrying those two up, then the end goal isn't going to correlate and it's going to be completely pointless. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 and it, I think as a marketer, you know, if, if you feel like that you you don't get that buy in from from the business or or from consultants and and marketing's not valued, then you know, don't try and force it. And I'm, I'm being very blunt here, and Richard already mentioned it: is go and find a company that does does value it because. As an industry, we we lose far too much talent from people thinking that oh, I can't do that here, I'm going to try another industry. There's there's lots of recruitment businesses, lots of businesses in general that, that do value marketing. Um, but it might be that you've just fallen into the wrong business as well, isn't it? And if I can jump on that as well around, 
it's that bizarre statement where people say they don't need marketing. The worst thing is, and you've probably found this as well, it will always be the high billers. And that's yep. because what they've always done has worked. They've created a great career for themselves. And by yep. being involved in new campaigns or strategies, it creates a risk for them. Yep. And that element of risk is something that they're not willing to take on. And as a marketer, you have to understand maybe that's not the person you need to convert to be one of your role models. Yeah. What you need to do is almost show that by using marketing, someone else in the business that is potentially more junior to them can adopt your techniques and skills. And then over time, they will become that high biller. Yeah. So it's getting people engaged is not something that you can do overnight. It's about working with your champions to help them get better because you are, unless you're a lot better than I am, you're going to struggle to turn high billing, highly effective consultants into marketing heroes as easily as you can with someone that's a little more junior and has something more to prove and is willing to take more risk. To get into some kind of specifics, what what has what has worked for you over over the years in in terms of you know engaging with the consultants? Because you you know you've produced chunky chunky white papers event programs everything that's tied in as well as the day-to-day -day stuff but what is it that's you know really worked for you in terms of a practical thing that, that some of the listeners and watchers can take away um, actually going on to that point you mentioned around um, that billy put into the chat around carabone pastries as much as it feel like feels like it cheapens what we do and how we have to get someone engaged into marketing the reality is in recruitment a marketer's job is about that kind of big goal, but a recruitment consultant is actually given quite short-term incentives. So we've all been part of the BD days where a bottle of champagne is put on the end of the table. First person to make 10 calls wins a bottle of champagne. No outputs there, it's just yeah. about activity. As marketers, we know that's bullshit, but <laughs> it gets people engaged on that first step that you can then feed into. So using a really good example, is um, at Stanton House, my team and I, we actually ran something called the Content World Cup. So we identified the one thing that was screwing up our business and our marketing campaigns was that people just were not sharing content or creating enough content on LinkedIn. So I brought a physical World Cup, big trophy, <laughs> probably should have taken it with me when I left the office for the final time. <laughs> And we gridded the entire business out and put one team against another team. And on that day, their task was for their team captain to put some original content on LinkedIn. Whoever got the most likes, shares and comments went through to the next round. And then they played against the other team. It went through, built loads of energy, and it just encouraged people to share content and understand at the end of it, oh, those people are coming back to me. I've now built more relationships because I shared that content. Obviously, doing a content World Cup or having a fad every single month is not sustainable. But just doing that sort of initiative or campaign that goes over a number of weeks that people really buy into is a lovely first step for you to prove the concept and then to work out who actually has a really engaged network and then to take them further with you in the marketing campaign. Yeah, and I, I think I remember when LinkedIn first launched video and internally I did something very similar. It was, you know, who who could create the best? And this, I'd, I'd never say this advice now in terms of video for, for LinkedIn. It's, it's who can present their job the best on LinkedIn. And it is, you know, whoever whoever judged by me and my team can do the best job video every week you'll have a you know 20 quid starbucks vouchers but that gamification with recruitment consultants really does work um and you know they're, they're competitive bunch more often than not so i think that, that's really key adam's just mentioned there um you know it's it's Ad, adam gordon's go-to line in terms of marketing being the engine room for all recruitment agencies now i'm not sure whether he is um he's suggesting that you can run and get results from a from a marketing function without the need for for consultants. Um, I'm sure we'll talk to him about that when we. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about that when uh, when he jumps on a show about automation in a in a few in a couple of weeks. I think. Um, but 
do you, do you think that's realistic? Um, I'm in between yeah. both stages there. So for me as a marketer, my big focus is that BD and marketing is a marketing piece. So I do not want any of our consultants to ever have to make a cold call because that horrifies me. That means that I'm failing at what I'm doing. And that's actually mm-hmm. solving one of their problems as well. But what I want to do is to put that groundwork in, generate those leads, and then for the longevity of our industry, I think sales and recruitment consultants need to be better than what marketing can do. So they need to be able to add on an additional layer that makes them better than a consultant in another agency. If it is just a marketing function that is going all the way through the process, I think that our industry could be in a little bit of trouble because I don't think that we're adding enough value on top of that initial interaction. So I absolutely think the recruitment consultants are pivotal to closing that deal and actually making sure that those initial leads convert. And one of my obvious um, goals and conversions is about making those introductions. And the output is how many grade A candidates make it onto or how many um, contacts we create that then move into a situation where they will provide testimonials to us. So have to disagree with you there a little bit, Adam. I think that recruitment and sales have to be in there and marketing on its own. I don't think will work for a specialist, um, specialist or niche recruitment consultancies at all. I I, I could um, bring you in, Adam, to talk about it, but I don't want to waste <laughs> um, waste what we what we talk about in a in a future episode. So I'm sure um, I'm sure we'll come back into it. There you go. See recruitment consultants and sales. We'll yeah. we'll pick all that up with Adam <laughs> in a future episode. So make sure you uh, make sure you tune into that. Um, so if all of the all of the pieces fall into place, which they have to you. Um, you know, on numerous occasions throughout throughout your career, what does a successful campaign or marketing piece look like where where the consultants, not sales, Adam, have been involved? Um, what you know, what does that look like for people? I will start at a question that is so synonymous, and I think I've heard this answer at least a million times in my career. Will be, what is your biggest problem at the moment? And a consultant or a director will tell me me we need more candidates yeah that will be the goal the objective you've got two options you either then walk away and say okay i'm going to go and get you some more or you start being smart about it so my campaign would look the first question is to break down and say why do you need those candidates so based on their jobs forecast look at their pipeline their hit rates the size of their current engaged network how many people do they actually need and when do they need them? So is it a case of they need all of these candidates tomorrow or do they just need 15 a week over the rest of the year? So it's really to understand how many they need and what types of people they need compared to the current network they've got. Once you've got that, it suddenly makes it a lot easier because you've got targets that you can set. You have a definitive number and objective. And again, apologies, this is get a bit granular and boring, but we'll get to the fun stuff at the end you then chunk that down. So pick out a number. If you need 100 candidates a month, where are we going to get those standards 100 from? How many do you usually get by referrals? How many could you reactivate from your current database? How many will you just stumble across? How many will come from existing job activity? So um, job adverts. And then you're left with this magical number at the end where it's, oh, actually what you need me to do is every month to get you 20 um fds that makes life a lot easier at that point i will take that away as a and create a bit of a rough plan and say in my experience my knowledge these are the sorts of campaigns you could be doing and it could be absolutely anything based on your niche and you understanding what will resonate with that audience once you have that don't go into too much detail and then sit down with the consultant or director and say These are a few of my ideas that I think will work and achieve our goal. And then going back to my agency days, you create a campaign brief. So you work on that brief together, you set deadlines, you set expectations, and you set deliverables, and you both sign it off. Once you've signed it off, both of you are fully aware of what this campaign is going to look like, where responsibilities lie, then you just get off your ass and do it. If you know 
this is the first stage and this is how we gauge whether it's been successful or not, a consultant has to be involved. If a consultant isn't involved, then the campaign doesn't work because of that. Move on, just scrap yeah. it. But there's no point having that fight if you feel like you've agreed a contract and you have been let down. Likewise, if you didn't do as a marketer what you'd agreed to do, the other person isn't going to be too happy about that. So it really is set guidelines and then walk away from it if it's not working. Yeah, I, I think that is it's, it's putting the accountability back, isn't it? I think traditionally and and still is the case is that we work in very fluid markets and, you know, it, it's come up in the WhatsApp group a lot about, you know, someone's going to a meeting in three hours and they need a PowerPoint and, and a marketing department's become very, very reactive in that sense. I think if you are in that reactive environment at the moment, you need to take it upon yourself to make it proactive don't expect it to happen don't don't expect a, a sales director a ceo or any consultant or anything like that coming to you and saying oh look let, let's plan this out properly so so we can help you do your job you you've got to do it yourself i think you need to create the the parameters for for campaigns there's always going to be reactive stuff that's that's completely understandable but for specific marketing activity is have those objectives how's it going to benefit the business how's it going to benefit as individuals um and if it doesn't work that's the key as well is to walk away because in you know for so long we've seen the same stuff churned out the same approaches to candidate attraction the same approaches to to bd and if that's not working at the moment you know stop doing it try something else um and that that's one of your best things to say if, if you're trying to introduce something new and it's a case of you're getting some pushback or you you're not getting the involvement from the from the recruitment consultants the best thing to just you know the best rebuttal to come back is to say well is your current approach working so i assume you're getting all the all the candidates you need all the new clients all the new jobs are coming on board because the answer is going to be no like you said consultants never have enough candidates they never have enough jobs in in the majority of of cases so you know you can you can always flip that conversation um with it without being frustrated about it and i think you know we can come across as frustrated people uh frustrated marketers now and again that's probably another another whatsapp group but alongside the lonely marketers is the frustrated marketers yeah and you've actually held my head to avoid being frustrated with people and I know there's a lot of conversation around it. it really, really annoys us. But when you have a consultant that may go rogue, may go and do something off their back that is truly horrendous, that you just look at it and cringe and you're embarrassed, but it might get traction. So yeah. you've got two options. Early in my career, I would have been fuming, gone over and told them off. And in hindsight, what a horrendous approach. So it's going over and saying, look, I saw you did that. Love it. Really yeah. worked. But... Why don't we try this this and this we might be able to get you even more traction next time you can prove it so it's about not always being that frustrated pissed off person it's sometimes just giving people a little bit of flack celebrating those little wins and even if it's not how you would have done it mm -hmm. if they've done it and it's got results maybe their approach might have actually been a little better than the approach that you were going to suggest yourself so it comes back to that and i'm a terrible person to give this advice but just leave your ego at the door sometimes and yeah. just understand that sometimes sales can actually be better at marketing than we can. Yeah. But what we're then there to do is to learn and refine and support them as well. You mentioned you mentioned there as well about um kind of putting putting the consultants on on a pedestal now and again when things go well. Is that is that something that you found found works? You know, shout about it. Yeah, absolutely. The one challenge you have, and we all know who in our businesses are the people that you can put on the pedestal. And you can sometimes get stuck in a bit of a situation where you celebrate that person. Everything's incredible. You keep celebrating, celebrating. And it gets ignored. Yeah, that's it. Or worse still, they're then not making the money. So you're almost celebrating the wrong person in the business. So what you need to do is, again, try to find out, spread your bets a little bit. Work with a number of people and know that some of them aren't going to get the results you're expecting. So you can't just work with a golden consultant and just assume that's going to walk through. You've just got to yeah, spread across a few and then fingers crossed, hope that a few actually pull through. Because again, the marketing could be incredible, but for a bit of bad luck, 
they might just not be making the money. And then that will be construed across the business as failure, whereas yeah. you know that it's not, but you just need a consultant that makes money and is also good at marketing as well. It's yeah. the holy grail. And if any of you have got those consultants, feel free to share their details and we'll poach them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll ju just pick it up on um, on Billy's point there about needing the the brand ambassadors for the consultants because they want to be seen as experts, or, or they 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 should be. You know, the, the the good consultant should be. It shouldn't be about you know selling you selling your granny to do a deal and who cares whatever else. And again, it, if you're in that environment and you enjoy it, then cool, fair play. But if you are and you don't like it, then you know look at options i know they're a bit limited at the time of recording and things but but do look at that but um with that's what we can play a role in isn't it is is ask the consultants these questions do you want to be known for this do you want to be known for for that do you, would you would you love to hold an event like this would you love to create a, a white paper that gave insights that allowed you to send it out and if the answer is yes to those conversations go ahead and do it and use all the the tools that kind of you were saying as well but that only happens if you keep having the conversations as well at a consultant level isn't it um you can't just think you know everything from a marketing point of view because you know the consultants do know the market better than you you know 99 percent of the time um but one of the questions just jumping into a question there that that jess asked um in the q a she said you know how how do you deal with consultants who think that they're better at marketing than you are <laughs> and keep telling you how to to do your job um which you know that is i think that is a valid question everyone does think they can they can yeah. do marketing don't don't they pragmatic response to this is do you actually give a shit about the feedback they're giving you does it actually make any difference if as a good example is if you're being given feedback of this campaign would have been better if you did X, Y, or Z, if you look at it and go, wouldn't have made any difference. So yeah, thanks for the feedback. Implement that feedback, see what happens. Work with those people because even if they are an absolute annoyance to you and you feel that they're undermining you, you feel that they're um, making your life difficult, hopefully they're doing it from the right place and hopefully they actually want marketing to succeed as well. So I'd almost try to work with them to make them marketing heroes celebrate what they're doing or almost challenge them if they're coming to you and saying this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong you should do it this way say let's do it your way and do you know what maybe it works maybe it doesn't work but at least you've proven it at the moment as well and it's probably a bit of a controversial thing to say in general as long as you're on brand there are less expectations of what people should be producing at the moment because people are trialing more things, people are failing faster and moving on. So if you've got that sort of consultant and whilst they're isolated at home as well, you might be able to build up a slightly better relationship with them because they've not got anyone around them that they may be trying to um, show a bit of bravado around. So just take that time now to work with them, really understand why they have so many questions and almost if you can work together and prove that you're good at what you do, then that's going to put them to sleep. I would yeah. pass. That's an awful description. Hopefully not put them to sleep. <laughs> yeah. but, um, not in the if, veterinary sense, no. <laughs> that might help. I don't know who these people are, Jess. But um, beyond that, if you can turn these people into positives, then that will really revolutionise what you do. Yeah, and I think, you know, speaking from personal experience as well, those people who think they're good at marketing um, and have an opinion, you'd much rather have more of those people in the business who are rather than people who are completely apathetic about it and just don't value it. They just get on. They don't They don't even want to have the conversation. At least those who, who think they can do marketing, like believe in the very least that the in the concept of it, because they think they can they can do it better um so you know I, I i completely agree and if if i look back to to my time when i first started at, at staff group for example um and billy you mentioned it in um you just put a question there about how do you deal with dinosaur recruiters who think they know it all um 
when I first started at Staff Group, there were there were consultants there who had started as graduates and made a lot of money um, for well, what was it, eight eight years probably to to the point that that I had joined. I was trying to never been a marketing department in the company, old school IT sales, uh, IT recruitment. So you can imagine you imagine the environment, and I was trying to introduce new things. I was always getting that. Now nah, this isn't how we do it, mate. You know. You know, we just do our mouth shots, et cetera, et cetera. And, and there is a case of, you know, just going ahead and doing it and just drip feeding the individual wins, building it up. Because over time now, you know, now that I run, you know, two ends and businesses, it's those same people who have gone on to set their own business up are coming to me for advice now. And it is a long game. You're not going to get the you know if you if you went into a business now and said look everyone i want you to do a tiktok video and we're going to put it on linkedin is you're probably quite rightly going to get told to fuck off if if i if i'm being honest in the majority of recruitment businesses but if you use whatever richard said you know and it is and the end game is tiktok i'm still not entirely sure that would be the appropriate channel at the moment um but if you if you go away and you plan it out and i hate to use the phrase business case but you do create a business case of what you expect in terms of results and you're willing to put your own head on the block for saying look if x y and z happens i expect these results this is who's accountable then it's on you and then you prove that you're the expert in marketing um because a, a, a consultant won't be able to do that it, it, if someone says we should be doing it this way i ask why say what 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 results do you think you're going to have? And like you said, Richard, go with it. And if it doesn't work, then you can draw a line under it and you can start putting in your own ideas and things a little bit more as well. And expanded upon that point slightly, as marketers, we seem to have an innate ability to try to fix things. So we are very good at identifying problems and trying to fix them. If you've yeah. got a dinosaur consultant that's built up loads of incredible relationships, still goes for dinner with them we'll go out for beers with the core network they might not be expanding that network but for yeah. them it works and it's what their business is and do you know what sometimes you actually have to look at it and go if they adopted all of the marketing approaches we wanted them to they may actually be a less effective recruitment consultant yeah that isn't anything to be ashamed about that's just that person has learned their craft and going back to the other question you're telling them how to do their job and they've already been successful so there might be some things that you can help them with, but on the whole, yeah, maybe look at it the other way and go, actually, they've done a bloody good job. They've got a good career. They're not the future of this business. Yeah. If we just focus on the future of the business. And if they're billing at a decent rate, you're still taking a percentage of their NFI into your marketing budget. So leave them to it. They're funding you still. What would say was your um, your best success in terms of... Uh you know, a marketing slash consultant campaign and and why do you think that was the best one? Um, the big one is a programme and luckily I had an incredibly talented team around me at Stanton House that did most of the heavy lifting for me. Yep. Would have been last year the content series we put out was absolutely obscene. So we we're a marketing a team of three, also had remit for tech, data and systems and marketing. Yep. As we all know many many hats <laughs> but i made a commitment where we would put out a white paper every month and when i say a white paper this was original research backed by original interviews kind of about 40 pages long as well we would interview every, there, every month every month yeah so wow. i made that commitment that we were going to do it and we did it and it was absolutely incredible because it revolutionized how people engage their network because it meant that they had insight that my benchmark was any report we created had to be on a level with something ey would create this is yeah. where my ego comes into play mm -hmm. and it was let's produce the best quality content that we can let's then put events around that that, pe that our consultants can invite people to let's then go and find out who in the world they would absolutely love to speak to but they have absolutely no chance of speaking to because they are recruitment consultants and that person would have listened to. So we had, again, senior partners of um, massive firms. We had some really senior business leaders that would come in and talk to us and talk to marketing, but they would never in 100 years speak to sales or recruitment. So 
So how, uh, how did you get those relationships with, with those people, for example? Um, again, I had um, Jackie, who was in my team at the time. She was She's incredible at building relationships. Yeah. She probably should be a recruitment consultant at <laughs> some point. But we really sat there and said, who would be? And use an example, we did something around reverse mentoring. And I just said, who would be the best person to speak to? So she went away, found someone that was a senior partner at EY that had been interviewed in, I would say it's the Times or the Telegraph. So she approached him, went for him to secure that interview. We then looked at and said, what companies do we want people to talk about reverse mentoring? Microsoft had a program, let's go and get someone. So we as marketers went out to be able to secure the interviews we wanted to, to make it credible. And then because we had original insight that no one else had access to, the consultants absolutely lapped that up because that is beyond a competitive advantage. No one else in the industry had interviews with those people on some of those topics. So as a campaign series, it was exhausting. And I think yeah, Jackie and Luke probably hate me to this day that we went through this experience because it was tough. We had to absolutely graft. But yeah, that insight and, was incredible. And were you relying on the consultants then to like promote a lot more and, and sell it out because in, in a weird way and and adams and adams mentioned it there is that that kind of series promotes a lot what he was talking about is like well let's try it and well let's literally take the consultants out of it and they only get involved in the in the feedback afterwards but um i, I suppose initially that did, did did you go to any of the consultants say look can we approach people or can we send yeah. people out and things like that and this goes back to almost right, full circle of what we talked about yeah. to start with is who in their network do they know so once yeah. you've devised the topic and the pain point is there anyone in your network that would be interested in talking about this and if they're a good enough caliber absolutely you include them in you also include that sponsor as well so shine the limelight on that consultant or that director that they head up this original piece of insight. They're the ones that have that conversation on the front pages. And then we go away and do that heavy lifting. Yeah. The obvious thing we then worked out is we don't know everybody that would be perfect for that white paper or insight. So it's then the marketer's job to go and find those people for you. Yeah. Uh, just a question popped up here from, from Jordan. Thanks for, for asking, Jordan. He's gone, uh, Richard, how often did you, or do you, I suppose, uh, present the marketing campaign results to the company um, and and what metrics did you use? For that one, it was, uh, we actually learned through the process. The main first thing is, how many times is this document being shared? So a lot of what we have would be gated content. So there would be an exclusivity period where the only way you can gain access is if a consultant is sharing it one for one. Or, yeah. of course downloadable from the website so that would be the obvious metric we would then and again the systems weren't quite in place we had to blag it a little bit was by using bullhorn we would track everyone that's received that content and then mm -hmm. use a bit of an attribution model around what happened next so with the interviews we had what percentage actually engaged with the marketing content compared to which didn't and it was a really positive trend where you could see, actually, the ones that we get in onto the system that are new contacts are more likely than not have received that content at some point. Yeah. And you then obviously have to do the expected monthly boring reporting, but yeah. it really is doing the standard numbers of this is what's been shared. These are the good stories, good anecdotes. But most recruitment consultants don't give a shit about what's happening across the business. What they give a shit about is what's happening on their desk. So it's about celebrating those individual wins of this person got a um, job offer with this company because of this piece of content. And it's yeah. about finding those wins. And yeah, a few placements, you've almost justified half of your budget just by sharing it. So actually the numbers Yes, that's lovely to a senior audience. It keeps you and your team in a seat. But from a consultant perspective, it's the anecdotal evidence. And it's also getting the people that have had those wins to celebrate it rather than yeah. the marketing saying, we've, we're great. Look at this. We've done this. We've done that. 
I think, like you say, it's going back again full circle. If you go looking at a campaign um, before you've started the campaign, you've dis you've defined what what success looks like in terms of metrics and objectives. Um, now, if it's a year, you might want to see how you are, you know, against that expectation on a monthly basis. Um, but you should already know it. I think, you know, Jordan will we'll be discussing all things kind of return on investment with Janine on, on Thursday. Um, if you want to join that, we'll probably go into more detail in terms of what you can report monthly um, at a board level, but uh, simple stuff at a, at a wider level, I think away from, you know, the monthly board meetings when, you know, a select few people see it. I think, think with your, your marketing head on in terms of how to promote success uh, you can send obviously emails out, but even creating kind of monthly, you know, an internal comms newsletter that has a kind of a marketing corner and celebrates those wins. It, obviously not at the moment, but I remember creating physical things that, you know, sat on kitchen kitchen tables in the office or, you know, in library corners that just sat there for a month that people were scrolling through. Now, obviously you can't do that much now, but, you know, use that time as well to just present things in a different way people aren't going to pay attention to to spreadsheets only the only the finance bods and that is important and i think we'll um you know we'll discuss that a lot more on thursday with with janine in terms of proving roi on objectives but you're never going to be, be able to pr uh, prove a return on investment if you don't know what you're expecting to get from it in the in the first place anyway cool right i don't think there's any more questions there but I was always aiming for about 45 minutes, but <laughs> if if people are I'm putting you on the spot here, if people are struggling right here, right now with getting consultants involved and they could do three things, you know, it's a little bit of a struggle now. Adam, we'll answer your telesales question on your session, okay? <laughs> um, when, if people are struggling with getting consultants involved, what three things can people do right here right now i know it's a unique situation with uh with lockdown and stuff like that but speaking maybe a little bit more generally what what can people go away and and do now the first thing and this sounds really really simple but we over um think this a lot is to genuinely ask for help so if you feel like you're having a fight and you're up against consultants not doing what um, you've agreed to do and it's basically getting you down Go to your boss, go to your MD, go to your CEO and explain the situation. If you've got the commercial thinking, and again, try to be as commercial, if not more commercial than your recruitment consultants. If you go to them and say, look, this is a really good idea. I've tried everything I can. How can I better connect with the business? Open yourself up a bit and they will actually give you that feedback. And again, if you share that vulnerability, they're more likely to support you rather than feeling like it is your decision and it is on your shoulders to always engage the business. Mm -hmm. Just go and ask for that help and you may actually get some better ideas. So that's a really, really simple thing that obviously suggests as we're all in isolation lockdown at the moment, it goes back to the point I said earlier, is try to build a couple of relationships with people who are really important culturally within your organization they we all know who they are they're the ones that if you walk over to a desk they will come back with a joke or they will take the piss rather than just saying yeah of course i'll do that now is your opportunity they will be missing the social interaction as well to try to build a relationship with them so look in your business pick a couple of them and try to highlight who they are then just try to engage them that way set up a zoom have a chat see how they're feeling and then try to build on it and again come across a bit more vulnerable to them as well and ask for their support. And if they are really important culturally, piggyback off of it and know that if you can get them to share your next campaign or piece of marketing, it's a lot more likely that other people in the business will get on board as well. Mm -hmm. So that would be yeah, the two really obvious things at the moment is just to be open, ask for support. A lot of the people on this call as well will be in smaller teams than they were a few months ago as well. So you have to be aware that you're trying to do a lot more. You can't try to be as strategic as you were. So you have to lean on other people. And as we all know at the moment, most recruitment consultants seem to be 
a lot less busy than they were as well. So they have more capacity to do things. And if you can get those behaviours into people now, when we come out of it at the other end, it's just something they'll be doing because they'll see the benefits. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think I just I just had a another quick dive into the poll now, and you know, sixty six percent of people are kind of saying some of the time is when people are you feel they're bought into activity. So you know that, that that's good you know if some of the time they're brought in is look look at what those activities might have been the themes of that those activities and try and leverage off and do more of that um you know we'll always have you know a huge number of ideas and and i think as marketers we always like to think that our ideas are the right ones because we spend a lot of time thinking about them it's not always going to be the case um so I, I think they're you know they're great they're great tips and like say at the moment um uh, as we're recording this where one's in isolation it is start having those conversations more i think i think that's uh, that's that's really good but i think for, from my side in terms of in terms of takeaways is that whatever you're doing from a marketing point of view it can't be just we need to do this you know Make, make a plan, however big or small, set the expectations and present what you're ex how you're expecting to, to, to benefit the business and individuals. Um, like Richard said a couple of times, maybe leave your ego at the door, how it might benefit you. You know, it might be nice and shiny, but don't worry about that. You'll, you'll get the recognition further down the line once the, you know, once people have seen results. Um, but, uh, you know, I think for a first episode, Thank you very much for for coming on the show, uh, Richard. Um, as as I've mentioned, uh, Janine is up on Thursday at midday talking about all things return on investment. So when we talk about uh, return on investment, again, it's another something to to have in your armory to to justify your position. Um, I can imagine a lot of people don't have budgets or they're not in control of budgets and things so make sure you sign up uh to to that um if you haven't already sign up for the the newsletter that, that goes out every monday link in the chat and and for the clever ones of you all future episodes you can subscribe to them now you just need to change a little number in the url of the session so one to eleven all of the sessions change them but i'll be promoting them as much as can so thank you very much um that's us done and dusted thanks richard don't go out in the sun <laughs> pleasure thanks guys for listening see you later everyone bye-bye